All right, welcome back to part two of the order confirmation email with Marketing Cloud. In part one, we covered the commerce side of the setup and the overall use case. And in this video, we'll be going through the Marketing Cloud piece of this, where we'll be creating the email, data extension, and journey, and then finalizing a couple of the actual uh, configurations inside of uh, Salesforce and Commerce Cloud, and actually going through a live uh, commerce order here, and we'll bring up the entire solution together. So if you wanna see the completion of this order confirmation email with Commerce Cloud and Marketing Cloud, uh, stay tuned, we'll go right into it. All right, so I've dropped us right into our order confirmation email. We're gonna follow the same method we did last time where we're not gonna build this live, but we'll show examples and kind of walk through this. Uh, so we've jumped right into an order confirmation email here, which is relatively simple. We have our, our title section at the top here. We have a footer section down below with some of the required information for the email to be sent out. And then one of the uh, you know templated uh, social media sections at the bottom. The magic though really happens in this uh, code snippet section here. So if I were to open this up, you can see that there's a little bit of code up here at the top, which you may or may not be familiar with. And then some you know typical table structures as you scroll down a little bit further here. Now I'm actually gonna open this up inside of our uh, Visual Studio, just so it's easier to see. But you can see here, this is a combination of a language at the very top called uh, GTL or Guided Template Language, uh, which is uh, one of the ways to create dynamic components inside of emails uh, inside of Marketing Cloud. We could have done this with AmScript. Uh, however, when we're dealing with situations like this where we you kind of have a JSON blob we need to deal with, a uh, Guided Template Language is exponentially easier to deal and handle with. So we're really doing just a couple of different things in this section here. Uh, what we're trying to do is we're trying to build the item section, which is three across, and we wanna show the image, the title, and a couple other attributes about the items that are coming across on the order. So you can see here at the top that we actually are using a bit of AMP script, and we're really doing that just to grab the order payload here and put it into a variable that we can use called uh, JSON. And inside of this uh, GTL block down here, we're taking that JSON um, and we're converting it into a JSON uh, variable here, which we're then iterating over. So this section right here is our iterable. So everything around it is just a table structure that we are using to make it look good and make sure that the columns show up correctly. And then as we go down to this section right here, we're saying every single time we have an item of JSON var, uh, or var here, it will show the section down below. And so if we have one item, it'll only show only one uh, column here. If we have two, it'll show two and, and so on and so forth. Um, and you can see that we have uh, that marked as a data source. We have our JSON var dot order items. And if we were to pull up our postman uh, to see an example again, we do have this order payload and inside of it, we have order items right here. And inside of that order items, we have our objects, which are all of the items. So that's why we have uh, that order items here. We're getting everything inside of that and we're iterating over that information. Uh, and then down below, it's relatively easy. We're just referencing JSON main, which is um, you know, the variable we're using to, to catch every single one of the rows that are coming through. And we're just uh, calling the names that are inside of that JSON. So if we go back here, we can see that there is a product uh, URL right here. We have items, we have names, we have quantity and all those pieces. Uh, we can use all of those uh, inside of this block right here. So everything inside of this data source uh, can be referenced with a JSON main dot product URL, uh, JSON main dot name, quantity, uh, amount, uh, and then we're just building the HTML around that. So uh, on the surface it might look a little complicated, but as we dig into it, you can see that it's not too bad. Uh, and we're just uh, taking that JSON and we're iterating over it and using it that way. Now at this point, before we can do a preview and test, we need to get our data extension created and we need to make sure uh, that it has the right attributes in here and it also ties correctly into the data that we wanna use inside of this email. Let's hop over into our data extensions and see what that looks like. All right, so for this section of it, we're actually gonna build this live here so you guys can see the data extension journey and the email coming together. Uh, you can see in the background here, I do have an order confirm uh, which is an example of what this would look like. But I'm gonna build another one and we're gonna call this order confirmation. Uh, not to be confused with order confirm, that's on the backside there. Uh, but we're gonna give it an external key here. We're gonna mark it as sendable. 
and we do not need a retention policy for this one right now. Uh, we do need a couple of different fields and it's really important we get these right here so that as we're adding uh, people into the state extension, which may enter multiple times because you may have multiple orders with this company, uh, they're allowed to enter. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add an order summary ID and this is going to be a text and it's going to be 18 characters long because that's how long IDs are in Salesforce. And we're going to make this the primary key. It's important that this is the primary key here because we really only want one order confirmation to go out per order that's created. Uh, but we do want people to be able to enter multiple times. So this will allow people to be entered with the same subscriber key, uh, but to make sure the orders only come across once. So the next thing we'll add in here is subscriber key, and we will make this uh, 255, although we could make this 18 as well. It really depends on your use case. And actually in my case, I will put this as 18 because it's going to be our 18 character. Uh, we do uh, not want this to be nullable. We do want that information. We'll also put in first name, last name, and email and order payload. Now let's go back and actually configure these now. So we'll leave first and last name at 50. Uh, we will change email to email address here. Um, and we'll mark uh, first and last name as nullable uh, because we potentially might not have that information. Uh, but we will leave order payload as text. We're actually going to clear out the length here. And this is a nice little trick for us uh, because this will allow us to capture the max volume uh, that we want in order payload. And then what we'll do is we'll map subscriber key to subscriber key and we will click create. So now we have the data extension that we need in order to connect. Let's actually hop over to journey builder and we'll build our journey. All right, we got a brand new journey uh, configured right here. And you can see we have a couple of options. Um, for our use case today, we're going to do a multi-step journey. We're only gonna put one email and it is best practice that if we're going to go only with one email, you might use like a transactional send journey or a single send journey depending on your use case. Um, so if we are only ever planning on doing a single email, we probably should choose this transactional send uh, journey. But because we are kind of setting up this idea that we're gonna enter them on this order confirmation journey and there might be multiple steps and we might have some you know, SMS or push notifications that are possible as well, uh, we will keep it with a multi-step here. Uh, but you'll see later on that it'll actually give us a no little notification saying, hey, you might wanna switch this over to a transactional one. Uh, but we, we have reasons why we don't want to do that. So uh, we will first bring over our API event uh, this is going to be uh, one of the most important things here because we need to trigger this from our invocable. So we'll go ahead and select that new data extension we just created and I put that in a folder right here for us and click summary right there. We don't have any filters on this. I want everyone to, uh, to join because we're doing some of that uh, filtering and error handling on the Salesforce flow side. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click done with that and we'll bring over our email as the next activity here. And we'll go ahead and select the journey we created previously. And uh, we should be able to see everything flowing in here correctly. Uh, we can see that our preview is pulling in the right email for us, which is great. And then before we get done here, uh, we do want to switch our journey settings here. So we do want a re-entry anytime. It has selected the email correctly for us. We're not doing any mobile or, or tracking here, so those all look fine to me, uh, and it is uh, pulling all the information I expect it to. So let's give this a name. We're gonna call this order confirmation journey, and we'll give it a save here. And the last thing I'll do, just for uh, something I always do is I switch this to an hour so people can come in and out of the journey quicker, uh, and we'll click save again there and validate, and let's see if everything uh, checks the box is okay. And it did, uh, and it did give us that warning I mentioned earlier about a transactional journey. Uh, again, if we were only doing this one email in the future, uh, that's probably a pretty good idea, uh, but we do want to expand this as we continue going. Uh, I will make one note here, now that we have that validated, uh, we'll can click activate here in a moment. I referenced the uh, entry or the event definition key a couple of times throughout the last video, and you can see this is exactly where you will get this. Uh, so you'll copy this, and that's the value that you'll put into uh, your flow inside of Salesforce that will allow the two pieces to connect together. 
Uh, so we'll, we'll capture that here in a moment. Let's go ahead and click activate so we get this thing going. All right, perfect. So we'll go ahead and grab this and you can do that by clicking on it and then copying this and uh, we'll hop back over into Salesforce into our flow. All right, we're back on our order confirmation flow here, which is our platform event uh, triggered flow. And all we need to do is go into our entry event for our fire event and journey. You can see we have all the information still captured here, uh, but we have this XXX and this is where we'll paste in that journey API event and click done. And now that we have that ready, uh, we will be able to click activate and go through a full life cycle of a person uh, going through creating an order, uh, going to actually get a confirmation email. So let's go ahead and click activate and we will go run through that test. All right, so we're actually going to do this from my guest checkout perspective on our B2C site, as I mentioned previously. Uh, so you can see that I'm on the page. I'm not logged in right now. I'm gonna hop over to our products and I'm going to choose our sync bundle here, if I can find that, here we go. And I'll go ahead and click the add all. And if you missed the video where I was talking about how to get this set up uh, with the product sets, um, it, I'll link it up here at the top. Uh, but that's how, why we have all three of these uh, on a single page here and we have this bundle connected. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click add all to cart here. And once that's been added, we can go over to our cart Let's go ahead and proceed through checkout and see if we get that confirmation email. All right, I'm gonna skip through some of this so uh, I can get to the billing portion of it. All right, so we filled out the uh, checkout piece here. Let's go ahead and place the order and we should get an email here in a second with our confirmation. So you can see that I got the email that came across here just a moment ago. Uh, from Salesforce Mojo, I did end up having one issue that I had to go back and fix, which we'll show in a second, just in case you're following me step by step. Uh, but you can see that I have the three products that I purchased and it came to my inbox, nicely formatted. There's a couple of things that, you know, if I were doing this production ready, I'd fix a couple of the like amount fields down below. So they had the sense and everything. Uh, but overall came across and I really connected the process here. Uh, so before I go into kind of an overview of what we just did here, I did want to go back to our order confirmation flow. And what I had ended up uh, messing up this uh, when I was initially uh, configuring this is that instead of going to the account, because I, I mentioned I'm doing this on my B2C site, uh, instead of going to the account and the person account that's created, I was going to the bill to contact, which didn't have the information I needed to pull across. And so it's basically uh, never getting to uh, this fire event. It was always going down the email did not exist path. Uh, so I updated that to go to the order summary, account ID, email address, person account, email address, uh, and all the uh, details here as well. Uh, and that did uh, successfully work for me. So once I made that update, I was able to activate a new version of this and was able to you know, recreate the, the order. And this did fire correctly from the platform event, which is exactly what we were hoping for. Now to do a kind of a recap here, what did we actually do? We went through uh, order creation, we created a platform event, uh, triggered flow, we created that call out, and in this video specifically, we created that journey, uh, the data extension, the email to really support the use case here. Uh, and that's kind of how you bring these two uh, worlds together. Uh, this is kind of the first video of this type, so if uh, this was uh, something that you were interested in and you wanna see more of these, uh, comment that on uh, this video. Let me know what you're thinking. I've already got a couple of requests for a CPQ plus Commerce Cloud one, which I uh, am working on, uh, but if you want to see more marketing cloud in Commerce Ones, uh, throw a couple of use cases in there too. Happy to build those and uh, show off the capabilities of these two platforms. Uh, so thanks for watching and uh, click like and subscribe if uh, you've enjoyed the video.